In 1898, William Anderson and Johannes Fabry described Fabry's disease. It is a lysosomal storage disorder that leads to excessive deposition of neutral glycosphingolipids in vascular endothelium of multiple organs. It is an X-linked disorder manifesting predominantly in men. However, female heterozygotes may also be affected. With a prevalence of 1 in 40,000 people, they may present early in first decade or as late as third decade of life. Fabry's disease may present with angiokeratomas, whirl-like deposits of sphingolipid in the basal layer of the corneal epithelium, hypertension with cerebrovascular accidents, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and progressive renal impairment. On behalf of Nephrocon, Dr. Anisha Manoja shall present the nephropathological findings of Fabry's disease. Fabry's disease is an X-linked recessive lysosomal storage disorder which is caused by a genetic deficiency in alpha-galactosidase A enzyme, which leads to accumulation of globotriazole ceramide 3. So this is the characteristic appearance of a glomerulus in Fabry's disease, where the podocytes show an expanded cytoplasm due to lipid accumulation, which gives it a very clear, foamy and uh, lacy sort of appearance. Now, sometimes in Fabry's disease, light microscopy can show a very non-specific sort of uh, finding. That is, it can have non-specific IFTA as well as focal and segmental globulospirosis and collapsing lesions. So, in such cases, it is important to have a high index of suspicion and to look for cells which show these foamy change. So, this foamy change can be seen in Podocytes. It can be seen in the tubular lining epithelial cells of uh, distal convoluted tubules. It can also be seen in the endothelium and smooth muscle cells of the vessels and fibroblasts in the interstitium. IF is of course negative. We have IHC uh, against GL3, but it is not being used commonly in practice. Electron microscopy is confirmatory. So, uh, in this, we see these sort of lamellated myelin figures or zebra bodies as they are called and they can be seen in the podocytes as well as here they are being seen in the tubular lining epithelial cells of the DCT as well as in the smooth muscle cells of the arteries. This is an exhaustive list of the differential diagnosis of Fabry's disease. To cut it short, the most important one is drugs and in that amiodarone and chloroquine are the most commonly used ones. So it is important to elicit a history of these drugs before giving a diagnosis of Fabry's disease. FSGS, FSGS uh, in Fabry's can be because of the effect of lipids on podocytes as well as because of a decreased nephron mass. To differentiate it from uh, a primary FSGS, it is again important to look for uh, these cells with foamy change. Similarly, uh, the vessel changes of hypertension can be similar to uh, the vessel changes seen in Fabry's disease. And again, to look for podocytes with uh, foamy change is crucial. Certain superimposed diseases have been reported in literature and the most common ones are minimal change disease, IgA nephropathy and ANCA-associated crescentic glomerulonephritis.